they, I want them to hear me express my confidence, right? right? And I'm not doing it so it fucks them up. I'm only doing it to help myself out. A lot of the shit talking that you'll hear from me is to talk myself into this, right? And then the other person takes it like I'm talking shit right. to them, and I'm completely okay with that, right? Please, you can take it however the fuck you want. But the fact is, is that talking I'm talking myself in into right. doing something that is, you know, you got a 50-50 chance on, I mean, the WAL is super intense right, right. now. I don't think, I mean, and I've made predictions, they've been dead wrong. Right. So the fact is, no one really knows who's going to win these matches. Right. And now, I know you don't care, but I've defended you a lot of times because you've been honest with these type of things for me. And for me, I, I have to know what, an, what a person's, where they're coming from. So people think you're like the biggest jerk in the world. You know, wow. What you show oh. on camera. But I know where the motivation well, You know what's scary from. is nah. that people are allowed to be... To think I'm a jerk in front of you. That, that's really concerning. <laughs> because no, I always defend you. Anybody try to tell you. me. Because the guy walks up to me and tells me you're gay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit happened two weeks ago, right? Hey, They're listen, like, yo, really, that's man it, that's says, I'm right just now. telling you, man says, I saw Paul at the gay club. I kissed him. <laughs> I kissed him. He kissed me back. That's funny. You know what I said? What is your interaction with this gentleman? I said, under no, he, he's my trainer. <laughs> I says to this guy. Paul is not that kind of guy. I don't care what you say. <laughs> so if you hear anybody calling me a jerk, Paul, I expect. I defend you. I defend okay. much, much, much. All right, let's give me, give me a situation. Give me a situation where someone said something and then you defended me. I mean, I've done it online all the time. Your social media is about as dead as a, as, a, as an eighty year old <laughs> in a nursing home. I mean, you respond in one word text. That's all I. Have. I so you're not exactly defending. I've made yourself. a lot of mistakes in my life. Okay. <laughs> This whole social media thing, sometimes I don't want... You know how many people I owe money in this world, Paul? I know that. Woo! Hey, buddy, they, they have come after me. You know Travis Page and he owes me $10,000 on my Facebook. This guy, I have to block him. That must be one of the guys that I only borrowed a little bit of money from. Yeah, 10000 just a little bit. Wait till the other guys come. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's right. awesome. Right. right. So, but, but regardless, back to, back to your persona. You're yeah. working yourself up for the match. And, and, and I think, and, and to be honest, where did you get... That mentality from because there has been a lot of great athletes you know we're buddies I hate to I hate to make this comparison but you know there's been a famous boxer who was notorious for speaking himself well, Say I am the greatest Say and the champ is here he's the greatest what's that guy's Muhammad name? Muhammad Ali is well, that what you remind you he reminds me no. he reminds me of a poor man's Joe <laughs> Frazier ah. So, right. so like, <laughs> I have heard that Muhammad Ali thing, and I can tell you that I didn't really, I'm not a boxing fan. I really? Didn't really know much about him. Was I was acting like Muhammad Ali before Muhammad Ali no, was acting like that. that. How old are you? Your birthday's coming up. I am 142 <laughs> years old. All right? But no, I like it. I like it, and I've seen a lot of athletes, you know, throughout football years and stuff, and kids like, who have literally talked themselves into greatness. I, I coached a kid, he's a good friend of mine, I brought him to one of your tournaments, um, played with Dewey, your buddy Dewey. Uh, but... I mean, as a sophomore, this kid was like 150 pounds. Couldn't run, knobby knees. You know what I mean? And I watched him just talk to me. He would talk trash to me. I'm going to be the greatest. I'm going to be stronger than you. But uh, to this day, this kid's stronger than me. You know, he's working out for, for his tryout with the XFL. And he literally convinced himself into what he was going to be. So there is definitely power in, like, building up your own crescendo. I agree. And I don't know how I got it or why I got it. Um, I know my dad. Um, I really wanted him to like me and I really wanted to hang around him and he talked a lot of shit and it right. was awesome, right? Um, so I think some of it came from him. Um, to be honest, my freshman year in college, I struggled in um, communications 101, right. giving those speeches. Like I had a stutter and right. you know, it's freaking too. tough, dude. Um, but slowly but surely, just experiences, I think that um, one of the, a couple monumental things that happened in my life. Um, first of all, I hosted like a karaoke contest when I was like 21 years old at one of my nightclubs. Okay. And it was the first time where I had the microphone and I'm calling the people up and I did a little stand-up comedy, you know, breaking it all down before explaining the format. And um, it literally, I think, kind of changed my life. Being in that club situation and actually having to host events, right. being on the microphone, not wanting to pay people to do that type of stuff, kind of exposed me to it. Um, being at the Reebok CrossFit Games in like 2006, I was already talking shit by then, right. but another bit of confidence is when you got the microphone in front of 20,000 people. Right. Um, my dad told me one thing when I was super younger. He said, Travis, if you predict something amazing is going to happen, 
um, and it doesn't happen, people just think they you were talking them. shit. They just forget but about it. But if you predict it and it happens, they might never forget that shit. So um, I kind of took that. And I went to the Nationals in 1997, not to win the Nationals. I went there to see how good right. I had to be. So many of us arm wrestling, we think that we need to be as good as the guy at practice right. or the guy that's at their local tournament, when the truth is, you really need to know how good is the top guy. Until you grab Rob Vigit and, right. and grab Todd Hutchings, right. you don't know how strong you for need sure. to be. So lucky for me, I got to train with Dave Patton. Right. He's an hour away, and literally, I could win the 242-pound national championship, not but not beat him at practice just because he was just something amazing. So instead of uh, trying to beat Dave, I watched Dave operate and I learned um, a lot about rising, a lot about um, manipulating the grip, and most importantly, um, how to attack without being comfortable. And I think that I've kind of taken that one thing is if I'm uncomfortable, as long as he's uncomfortable too, Let's see if he's worked in enough positions of being uncomfortable as I have, right? Because I have arm wrestled a lot more than most guys.